Hi, it's Scott from Community Therapy. We're here at Alpha Life Care. I'm with Gavin. What piece of equipment have we here? Thanks, Scott, and hello. Um, here we have the Lopital Lotus. So this is a stand aid, yep. essentially. So to helping somebody getting up from a sitter position um, to move them into another another piece of equipment or to wherever they need to go. Um, hopefully minimising the need to use big full lifters, especially when someone does have some standing capacity. They may have just um, gone from uh, a two-person assist or something like that where they just need a little bit more support without going to a full lifter where they feel completely dependent. Yeah, so there's many times an occupational therapist or physiotherapist would be looking at assessing and prescribing this piece of equipment for somebody. Like you said, somebody's struggling with their transfers, they may be living with a physical or neurological condition that's um, meaning that their strength or balance or mobility um, has declined. They still have the ability, however, to pull up. So pulling up at a bar, maybe a bar in the shower, for example, we're often able to see is somebody strong enough to pull themselves from sitting into standing and then back down into sitting. What it helps with is, yes, sometimes with a mechanical stand-up lifter, something that's got a bit of a sling and helps somebody move up, helps that sort of person um, still have the ability, if they can, to be more independent in a task. But it also helps with decreasing manual handling risk and injury risk for a person as well that's maybe doing more of a pivot transfer. So they may be standing up and be doing something like this with a lot of support from somebody to move around. Doing that repeatedly, especially if that's a carer or support worker or loved one helping somebody, can be quite dangerous in terms of things like skin tears to somebody, especially if it's an older adult with frail skin, all the way through to increasing the risk of manual handling um, injuries for workers, support workers, carers, and obviously increasing the risk of a fall happening at some stage if somebody loses their balance. So there's some of the times that we'll be looking at this piece of equipment. So importantly, one of the main considerations here, especially in the home environment, if there's carpet, different flooring surfaces, is we like to see how this moves over the home um, flooring and that's why a trial of the equipment is typically recommended. We also like to see with the wheels coming into a chair or recliner chair or underneath a bed, for example, that we are able to access there. So with this piece of equipment, if you wanted to show the leg opening, Certainly. We step on the pedal at the back here and that gives what we refer to as the open leg spread now. And closed is just stepping on the other pedal. Um, <clears throat> and that then gives access so you can get around whatever device you're trying to, yep. to get. So out. that width may be able to get around say a recliner chair um, or a standard chair. Sometimes we'll close that if we're needing to get under maybe a bed and the frame's a little bit closer. So having that ability to open and close the legs is a really important um, adjustment uh, for this piece of equipment. What I like about this uh, piece of equipment is that there's not much to it in terms of, um, I think a lot of the times with equipment, we're quite used to electronics and all different things. Yeah. You've got only a couple of moving parts. It's very robust, very easy to use as well. I think often if people haven't seen something like this before, they're like, oh my God, how does it work? And we'll show you in a moment. But once people get used to it, this can really be quite a life changer for um, somebody that really needs this piece of equipment. So how about we show me getting into it? Certainly. So we've got the leg spread open so we can get around the chair. The only other moving part is the seat pads <clears throat> which we move out of the way we then go into the chair we get the client to put their feet onto the foot plate and we get their shins up against the shin pad and then we put the brakes on and then we either assist or we help the client to stand up into the standing position and as soon as they're up we drop the seat pad down and now they can sit and Scott now is completely stable, is that right? Yeah, comfortable. 
Um, Fantastic. And he's not going anywhere. We can now take the brakes off. He can hold on and we can now move Scott to wherever we need to go to. Thank you. Good. <laughs> please, we'll take, you please, <laughs> take, please take me back. <laughs> Standing up. There we go. Wonderful. So there's through that process there's a couple of key considerations that we look for for an OT and physiotherapy perspective. One, how is somebody moving their feet up onto the foot plate? Is there any associated risk there for a support worker or carer from a manual handling point of view? Two, I like to think about the skin integrity risk on the shin pad. What is somebody's skin like on the front of their shin? And do we need to do any extra protection there for them to minimize any shearing on the skin? Three, how we're looking at somebody's shoulder mobility. It doesn't look like much of a reach here for me because I'm young with no restrictions to my shoulder. It can be quite hard if somebody's living with um, uh, musculoskeletal changes through their upper back uh, or through their shoulder as well. That could be from a disability, that could be through some changes for osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. So somebody may have to sort of climb their way up and that's okay. Gavin alluded to it before that you are okay to assist someone through that process as well. They may need a little bit of help for that initial piece of the standing to move their way up. Once we're there, mainly we're then looking at once someone is in sitting, do they have independent seated capacity? We're usually able to assess that before we use the equipment though. We're looking at maybe that first time we meet someone as an occupational therapist or physiotherapist before trialing equipment, having a look at all different things that that person can do. And one of those, if I was thinking about this, is I would assess someone's seated capacity without back support before moving on to trial here. Um, yeah, how's that? That's good. I don't think there's anything more on it. It's really simple, as you've said. Only two moving parts, the leg spread and the seat pad. Um, but it's a great interim step, especially yeah. um, when somebody needs just a little bit more than the stand and pivot yeah. transfer. Or Yeah, I think my, my primary takeaway for this piece of equipment for uh, health professionals or for members of the community if you're thinking about this is make sure that you trial it to know that it can go around the equipment that you have at home. Often the only problem we run into here is some models have fixed legs and they're actually quite narrow and people purchase that without an appropriate trial or advice from equipment supplier or allied health professional and find themselves with that at home not being able to get it under a recliner or bed or chair. So seek the appropriate advice for these pieces of equipment because you might find that you've purchased something that um, was not suitable for your needs as well. So that's good, yeah, it's an important point. The trials and uh, allied health yeah. um, professional advice is certainly a great thing yeah. not to going wrong. Wonderful, thanks so much for your time listening to this video. If you've got any questions, please reach out and we'll see you on the next one.